Next, I shall go through the steps that are involved in assembling a 10 element contract aerial. These are a very, very commonly used aerial and will become much more common in, in the coming years as Ireland switches over to a digital uh, terrestrial television system. Um, it's made up of four uh, or three basic component parts. It's made up of the, the 10 element uh, UHF aerial itself. It's made up of a, a, a clamping mechanism used to attach the aerial onto a pole and it's used for a base plate, a base plate as well. Okay? So how to assemble this? This is a relatively simple aerial to, to do. Um, the, probably the most time consuming part of it is actually uh, feeding a cable directly into, um, wiring the aerial uh, cable into the mechanism. What we do here is we remove uh, the cable uh, or the cover from the aerial um, housing um, and we insert uh, the satellite cable from the outside in into this section and we feed it through. Next we pick up the two tools that we're going to use for this job. The first is a sharp pair of snips and the second one is a flathead screwdriver. So first of all about 20 millimeters from the end of the cable we make a series of circular um, incisions in the outer black cable and then a series of incisions at 90 degrees to those and um, to the end of the cable and this will allow us to remove the outer unwanted black cable and uh, we can then access the earth wire which we wish to wrap around um, the base of the black cable and next we have um, an earth cable here um, or next we have the silver foil here which is unwanted and we use our snips to remove it now we want to leave about seven millimeters of the central foam um, and the rest of the earth or the central cable to be exposed. So we do this by making normally a series of three cuts around. We're cutting through the foam but not through the central cable. And now if we twist, the central cable or central foam will come off, but the actual earth cable itself has been to totally um, un uncompromised. Um, now if we look at the centre of um, the housing here where the wire is to be connected, you can see that it's it's actually a printed circuit board, a PCB, uh, with a ballon um, and uh, uh, two locking mechanisms, one for the central core cable and another for the actual outer earth cable, which is the series of um, um, copper braiding on the outside. Um, the advantage of using a uh, PCB ballon uh, is that it's fully compatible uh, with the digital specifications set out by the CAI and will also work well with the analog signal. Um, so what we do here is we simply, um, I've already loosened the screws to a certain extent, so I push the central core cable through the central piece, out to the bar side, and now I need to just lift up this slightly so we can get a good clamp on the, uh, the core as well. And now we come along and we lock here. So the central core cable has now been securely locked into position and we need to do the same for the two nuts that are holding the, the outer um, earth wires. So we are coming along tightening. So the whole, the basic assembly is more or less completed now uh, and it's taken the space of maybe two minutes or so. Uh, we slide the capping back on. We do this in a manner where we don't put excess pressure on the wire that's there. We come along and we push this wire on and over the housing. And now to stop it, we don't want to push down on top of um, the elements here. So just to lift the area into your hands when you're doing this and click the capping on. The next thing is, with this type of aerial, you want to cut it to whatever length you, you would think would be suitable, whether it's joining into a diplexer or feeding down to a distribution system. So in this situation here, I'm going to cut that cable perhaps about one and a half meters long. Now the next part of the process is to put on the back plate. Now the purpose of the back plate is, it might be difficult to see in the video here, but um, there's a slight curve on this back plate. And what happens is, when signal, uh, is deflected from here. It's called a deflector plate. It deflects signal onto the area itself to maximize the amount of signal that will be picked up. So if you put this um, curved 
The curve should face in on top of the 10 elements. If you put, do it the other way, it'll actually be dissipating rather than increasing the signal. And this deflector plate is very important. Um, the aerial will work considerably better with it than without it. So what we do is, the, the mechanism for putting it in is quite simple. Uh, we slide it over the grooves here and slide it downwards. So that's the assembly complete there. And now, and this is a very important thing, the wire should be fed through the slot at the base of the aerial. If you simply feed it over the aerial, what will happen is over a period of time, particularly if the aerial has been mounted outdoors, it will cut on the base of the unit and bit by bit the cable will become damaged and it eventually it will affect the operation of the aerial itself. Uh, and the final step here is, um, this is a very very simple um, um, uh, locking mechanism here, but it will allow you to uh, mount the cable either um, uh, horizontally or vertically. Right. So uh, what you do here is you simply slot this through like this man. Quite a tight squeeze, but it works well. And this is it. And this locking mechanism here is the part that you actually use to clamp it onto a pole that's been mounted um, either in your attic or more likely and better um, outside. And that's it. That's the complete assembly of a 10 element UHF contract area.